Hi guys, in this video we are going to build an Amazon price tracker application with the use of Django and Beautiful Soup. So without further ado, let me show you what we are going to build. So this is how a ready application looks like and currently I have four items that are being tracked and for now none of them is discounted. So maybe let's begin by adding an item to the list. So over here I have FIFA 21, let me copy this link and let me press add. Over here we have a model where we need to place the URL. Let's press save and it might take a minute and there it is. So here is our FIFA 21 and right now I'm going to update the prices. Okay, so we can see that PlayStation 4 has been discounted. The current price is $399, the old price is $469 and the difference is uh, $70. So right now we have one discounted item and this one discounted item is being brought up to the front. So at the top we can see the products that should be the most interesting for us because of the difference. So when the old price is higher than the current price that means there's a negative difference and that means basically that this product has been discounted and we should consider buying it. And then if we scroll down, we can see other items. So this is the one that we currently added. Of course, there is no difference in price. And then we have controller charger for Xbox One. Over here, we don't see any difference in price as well. We have Oculus Rift S and over here, you can see that there is no difference in price as well. And finally, we have Oculus Quest 2. And here, the price actually changed and it's higher than the previous one. So the old price is 369 and the current price is 399. So uh, we shouldn't consider buying this product right now. Okay, so now let's say that we decide to buy this product. So we need to open up this link and we simply need to purchase this product. And then once we do it, we can simply delete PlayStation 4 from the list. And then we just need to press delete, confirm that we want to delete PlayStation 4 Pro 1 terabyte console. And as you can see, it's gone. All right, so this is what we are going to do in this video tutorial. Hope you guys enjoy it. Right now, let's start part number one, where we will create a solution for web scraping with the use of Beautiful Soup. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so the goal for this video is to create a function that will return the name and the price of a product that we are interested in. And I will be using the PyCharm free community version for our coding session today. And this function that we will create during this session, we will simply copy and then bring it into our Django project. The Django project will be started in the next video, so in part two. And as mentioned before, I will also be using Beautiful Soup for web scraping. And then we will practice extracting the name and the price on those three items. So I have over here Oculus Rift S, I have FIFA 21 on Xbox One, and I have also PlayStation VR. So if we simply right click and press inspect, over here we have a span with the ID of product title and this is this is this so we if we could access this data we can actually grab it and use it in our Django project and the same is for the price so if I right click inspect over here we have another span with the ID price price block our price okay and as you can see over here is the price. So we need to find a solution with the use of Beautiful Soup to access this data so we can simply return it in our function. And then in Django, we will bring it into our utils.py file and use it over there. So now I'm going to head over to PyCharm and over here I have a new project created for this tutorial purposes and I deleted all its contents and I also 
copied and pasted the URLs that you saw. So we have the Oculus, the FIFA 21, and the PlayStation VR URLs copied over here, and only one of them is active for now. And right now what we need to do is to install a couple of things. So first of all, I'm going to go to the terminal and over here I'm going to install beautiful soup. So pip install bs4. All right. And we will also install the Python requests model. So pip install requests. Uh, I made a typo, sorry about that. Pip install requests all right okay so first of all i'm going to import requests and from bs4 i'm going to import beautiful soup all right we will also need one more thing and if we go to our beautiful soup documentation uh, the link is of course in the description if we scroll down so this is something that we will do in just a second but if we scroll down to the installation and then we will have problems after installation and then we have installing a parser so over here we have parsers that are available and the built one built-in one is html parser but we will be using lxml it works in my opinion just a little bit better and it's faster so this is an external dependency and in order to use it we need to install it so over here i'm going to put in pip install lxml XML. and let's wait a few seconds okay so right now we can actually also import lxml perfect as the next step, let's actually fetch the data. So I'm going to create a variable called r as response, and this is going to be requests get, and we are going to pass in the URL. So we are working on the PlayStation VR right now, but we will also need to set the headers. Headers, and we will set it to headers. And above, we need to create this headers dictionary. And we will need to provide information about the user agent and the accepted language. So first of all, I'm going to put in user agent, user agent. And here we just need to put in some information about what browser is being used, in what version, and in which um, operating system. So uh, over here, I'm just going to uh, go to Google, and I'm going to put in what user agent am I using and I'm just going to copy this information from over here and I'm going to paste it like this okay so this is my user agent and then we will have one more as mentioned before accept language and here I'm just going to put in English. Yeah. So here we will keep things simple. And right now this should work. And in order to load the data to beautiful soup, we are going to create a beautiful beautiful soup object. So I'm going to put in soup is equal to beautiful soup. And we are going to pass in R text and then we need to provide the html parser and as mentioned before we will be using lxml okay so if we take a look at the documentation we can now try to get the data as html so if we put in zoop prettify we should get this but for our particular Amazon page that is related to PlayStation VR product. So let's try this out. Let's find out if this is working. So I'm going to put in print and then soup and we want to use pretty five. All right, so I'm going to run main PY 
and let's find out if this is working. And there it is. So over here we have our parsed HTML data that we can actually use. So uh, right now we need to find out about a solution that will help us to get the product name and the product price. So if we go back to PlayStation VR, we need to uh, access price block our price and the name of the product will be product title uh, sorry this is a class and the ID is product title over here okay so over here we will have also some kind of a problem because as you can see there are a lot of white spaces and yeah we just need to keep in mind this so yeah right now we can work on the name so I'm going to put in name as uh, the variable where we will keep our name and I'm going to put in soup and then select one and over here we need to provide the ID so the ID is one more time product title let me copy this and paste it over here if this was a class we would use instead of this hash a dot okay so right now I'm going to comment this print soup Prettify, and I'm going to print out the name. So let's try it out. And as you can see, we have the data. So here's our title, but we also see uh, the span, and we would like to only get this particular title without the HTML elements. So in order to do this, we can actually add over here get text. We can use this get text method to return only the text uh, of the of the name in this case. So let's try this one more time. And there it is. However, the problem that we have over here is, as mentioned before, there are a lot of white spaces. So if we take a look at over here, uh, we see that here are white spaces as well so it's actually retrieved the entire block okay so we need to get rid of the white spaces before actually returning it in the function so in order to do that I'm going to write down name is equal to name and then strip so we are going to use the strip method and then we are going to print out the name again and let's wait a second and there it is so this is exactly what we wanted to accomplish and now that we have the name we can work on the price so over here um, I'm going to put in the price as soup again select one and over here again we will be setting the selector and we will be using the ID but this time we need to have the ID for the price so right click inspect and here is price block our price I'm going to copy it and put it over here and then uh, we also will use the get text method and then we will also print out the price so let's try it out and there it is so uh, right now the challenge will be to get rid of the dollar sign so we want to have this um, this value as a float okay so in order to do this we can actually um, write down the price is equal or let me do it a little bit higher above the print the price is going to be equal price and we will be using slicing so this should give us the price without the dollar signed and let's find out if in fact this is this is the case so i'm going to run it again and there it is so if we would like to have it in a float format simply we need to put in float around this price with the slicing and then run it again and there it is so right now we have a solution for grabbing the name and the price 
So we can actually work on a function uh, that we will define below and we will be uh, later using this function as mentioned before in our Django project in the utils.py file. So I'm going to um, define it as get link data and this will take in a URL. Okay, so now I can actually copy everything from the above except the URLs and place it in this function. And then I'm going to simply delete the prints and this is basically it. So we have this function that will be completed once we return the name and the price. Price. Okay, so let's test this out. So I'm going to copy this get link data and we are going to use it over here. So get link data and I'm going to pass in the URL and then we are going to print the output of this function. Let's see. Let me comment out those prints over here. And let's run this function. And there it is, PlayStation VR with the price without the dollar sign. So this is working for this particular link. Let's try another one. So let me comment this one out and use the FIFA 21 link. This is working as well. And let's try the first one. And this is working as well. Please note that there might be some situations where uh, this, the links won't work. We won't be able to retrieve the information about the title and the prices and we will simply get an error. There might be a situation where, for example, the product will be unavailable so there won't be any price or there might be some cases where Amazon will check if we are not a bot. So we will have a CAPTCHA. And in this case, uh, we won't be able to simply retrieve the information that is necessary. But those exceptions will be handled on the Django side of our project. For now, I would like to thank you for being with me today. Have a great day and see you in part two. Bye bye.